era. There is nothing wrong with your television set. Do not attempt to adjust the picture. We are controlling transmission. Yellowstone. There's really nothing quite like it in North America, in the world for that matter. And for most of us, we'll never see anything else like it in our lifetime. Yellowstone, the first park in the world, and it is America's Park. On this video trip to Yellowstone National Park, we'll take you on an excursion of sights and sounds you'll never forget. We'll tell you what makes Yellowstone one of the most unique spots on Earth. You'll get a brief history of how it became the first national park in the world. We'll take you on a tour of the park to view some of its amazing sights. We'll also cover some basic rules for the park. Then we'll look at a few things you will need to know before you visit, like what kind of accommodations there are inside the park, recreational activities, how and when to see wildlife, how to get there, how to get around, what to expect from the weather, and a lot more. But we've got a lot to see and do, so let's get going. Yellowstone National Park is a 3,472 square mile expanse of land in northwestern Wyoming. The northern and western edges of the park spill over the borders into Montana, Idaho. To give you an idea just how big it is, you could fit both the states of Delaware and Rhode Island inside the park's 2.2 million acres. Now that's big. Also, Yellowstone sits just about on top of another spectacular area, the Grand Teton National Park, which is the subject of another tape. Yellowstone's gentle, hilly terrain is set atop a large plateau with an average altitude of 8,000 feet. The mountain peaks within the park rise to about 10,000 feet above sea level. The landscapes and climate zones are diverse, ranging from desert-like areas to quiet, rolling green meadows, to dense lodgepole pine forest, alpine meadows, dramatic wild canyons, and the most spectacular sights of all, the park's incredible hydrothermal features, unlike any other in the world. There are only two areas similar to Yellowstone in the world, in Iceland and New Zealand but they hardly compare to the dramatic sights found here in Yellowstone. The park offers more than 10,000 steaming, hot, bubbling, and exploding attractions led by the most famous geyser of them all, Old Faithful. The park is also one of the largest and most diverse wildlife refuges in the world. All these attractions make Yellowstone one of the most popular parks in the world with more than 2.6 million visitors a year. But before we head off on our park tour, park historian and North District naturalist Tim Manns will help us take a look well, at Yellowstone's uh, past. Yellowstone, most people in the world who are interested in, in parks and knowledgeable about them think of Yellowstone as being the first national park in the, in the world. It, it was established as a national park by an act of Congress, uh, Congress on March 1st, 1872. Uh, this, this region of the country was one of the last explored, really, in, in the United States. In, 18, in 1872, Yellowstone was a very remote area, which had been uh, explored only to a minor degree uh, by, by three expeditions uh, in 1869, 70, and, and 71. 
And as a result of those expeditions confirming what had only been rumors about things like geysers and the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone and Yellowstone Lake, they, they confirmed the reality of those things and were impressed enough by what they saw to go uh, on a campaign, really, some of the members of this expedition, to, uh, to convince Congress to set aside this land uh, as a national park, to close it to settlement. It was all public property at the time, but was, but was open uh, to settlement by uh, people making claims under the Homestead Act. So Yellowstone became a national park in 1872. There were no other national parks at the time. There was no National Park Service, of course. So no, nobody really had any expertise or knowledge about how to operate a national park. In fact, Congress assumed that operating the park would require virtually no budget at all. So there was no appropriation to care for it. Uh, a superintendent was assigned, but he had no salary. And in fact, in his five years of service, Nathaniel Langford, the first superintendent, visited Yellowstone all of twice. Gradually, Congress uh, provided some funds to hire people to protect the park. But the people who were hired to do that were not very adept at the job, and there weren't enough of them. In 1886, uh, the government sent the United States Cavalry to Yellowstone. They arrived here on August 16th of that year in order to, uh, to begin the job of, of administering and protecting the first national park. While the Army was here, they built Fort Yellowstone, among whose buildings we're standing right now. Beginning in 1891, these buildings were constructed uh, through 1913 as a place for the Army to live and to operate out of while they protected Yellowstone. Teddy Roosevelt was one of the more famous visitors to the park throughout its history. When he arrived to dedicate the park in 1903, Roosevelt brought British naturalist John Burroughs with him to win a bet. Burroughs felt the wildlife of Europe was much hardier, bigger and stronger than the wildlife of North America. Well, Teddy disagreed, and the two made a wager on the proposition. With a U.S. Cavalry escort, Teddy headed into the park with Burroughs, and the Rough Rider won his bet. The natives who have inhabited this area for thousands of years thought of it as a sacred place, a land shrouded with mystery and filled with spirits. In fact, even today, this part of the park looks and feels almost prehistoric. Yellowstone region has undergone massive changes during the past two and a half billion years. Several mountain ranges have heaved upward only to be worn down again by wind and weather. Ancient seas have covered the area. What remains is a massive basin underlain by continuing changing maze of fissures and drainage systems that reach far below the surface to the earth's incredible heat. The results geysers blasting skyward, hot springs brightly colored by minerals and algae, massive terraced hot springs, noisy steam vents in the earth's crust, and gurgling mud pots. There's so much to see in Yellowstone that you just can't give it justice in a single day. In fact, give yourself at least three days to make your visit here a memorable one. Now, the most popular way to get to the sites of Yellowstone is in the comfort of your car or recreational vehicle. With 370 miles of road in the park, Yellowstone is a motorist dream, and you have the Army Corps of Engineers to thank. Park historian Tim Manns explains. Uh, you, you can imagine how inaccessible the place was. It's mountainous, there are lots of uh, uh, canyons, uh, thermal areas, uh, real challenges for road builders. But by the time the Army left, Yellowstone had what for its day was a very good road system built by the Army engineers. 
that allowed people to readily see the major features of the park. It, it was the Army, in fact, who just a century ago came up with the idea of what we today call the Grand Loop or the figure eight road system. Uh, the major roads of Yellowstone follow a big figure eight, which um, not by coincidence but by design happens to go by all the major features of the park uh, establishing a, a kind of standard tour of Yellowstone which is still followed today. The 142 mile Grand Loop is accessible from any of the five main entrances to the park. Actual driving time is hard to estimate because of the low speed limit, the number of cars and the fact that the roads are narrow. If your time in the park is limited, we suggest you pick one of the five general park regions to concentrate on. Those regions include the Hot Springs area, Geyser Country, Lake Country, Canyon Country, and the Lamar Valley in the Northeast. Okay, now we're here. What do we do? It's a pretty common question, especially for the first time visitor. That's what we're about to find out. We're going to take you on a quick road trip to show you some of the sights you can expect to see. This first tour of the park covers the region from Old Faithful to Mammoth Hot Springs, and on it you'll see Yellowstone's most spectacular hydrothermal features. In the southern part of the park, even before you get to Geyser Country, you'll see beautiful mountain scenery, including the spectacular Moose Falls, the 600-foot deep Lewis River Canyon, Lewis River Falls, and Lewis Lake. But it's Old Faithful, the world's most famous geyser that most people want to see. Though you can't set your watch by it, the park rangers use scientific formulas to predict its eruptions, which takes place 21 to 23 times a day. The area of Upper Geyser Basin and South to Old Faithful is one of the most interesting and renowned in the park. So, plan your tour to start at the Old Faithful Visitor Center just a few hundred yards from the geyser. The Visitor Center can provide you with information and tour maps. The entire area is a gem that needs to be explored at close range. Forget the car and just take your time to explore the many geysers springs, waterfalls, and emerald pools that cover the landscape of this unique area. Another popular area is Mammoth Hot Springs near the north entrance. Here the earth continues to build the spectacular terraces of calcium carbonate at a rate of two tons per day. This is a major feature of the park and definitely worth spending an hour or two wandering about. Self-guided tours are a good way to see and learn the fascinating geology of the springs. Other sites not to miss in this tour include Obsidian Cliff, a mountainside made of dark volcanic glass crystals. The Norse Geyser Basin is a favorite area for viewing a great variety of thermal activity. Elk Park, between Norse Junction and Madison Junction, is the best place to view the Regal Elk. National Park Mountain, a trip down Firehole Canyon Road where you can see the beautiful and warm water Firehole Falls, the Lower Geyser Basin, Fountain Point, Clipsedra Geyser, Firehole Lake Drive, which takes you by Yellowstone's most powerful geyser, the Great Fountain, and the Madison River is one of the best trout fishing streams in the world. The area from Mammoth Hot Springs to Tower Junction and the Canyon area covers the next logical tour region, the northeastern part of the park. The most dramatic site in this region is the Grand Canyon of Yellowstone. You can stand on the rim of the canyon and see the river that made it 1,000 feet or more below. You'll find awesome cascades of plunging water at the lower falls and at the upper falls. There are two excellent areas for viewing bison, elk, deer, moose, and other wildlife in this region. The Lamar Valley between Tower Junction and the northeast entrance and Hayden Valley along the Yellowstone River between the canyon and Yellowstone Lake. Watch for these other sites on this tour. Mud Cauldron, 
Mud Volcano and Mud Geyser north of Yellowstone Lake, the panoramic view from atop Mount Washburn, a petrified forest on Specimen Ridge, yet another spectacular waterfall, this one, 132-foot Tower Falls at Tower Junction, the odd overhang of Yellowstone Cliff, the needle, a thin rock spire sculptured by ages of erosion, Roosevelt Lodge, built at the site of the Rough Rider, Teddy Roosevelt's Yellowstone encampment. The lake area in Yellowstone means one thing, the clear, cold, and impressive waters of Yellowstone Lake, North America's largest mountain lake. 20 miles from the north to the south, 14 miles from east to west, Yellowstone Lake covers 136 square miles and has 110 miles of shoreline. Its average depth is 139 feet, but there are parts that exceed 300 feet in depth. This tour takes you from the east entrance to the park around the northern shore of the lake to the west thumb area. Drives along the shoreline are unforgettable. The Bay Bridge Marina, Lake Village, and Grant Village on the northern and western shores of the lake provide complete commercial visitor services. Other sites to look for in the tour of the lake area include the famous fishing bridge where the lake pours into the Yellowstone River. Now, while visitors can't fish from the bridge, they can see one of the best trout spawning shows anywhere. Lake Butte Overlook, a worthwhile side trip just east of the Yellowstone Lake to see one of the park's most spectacular views. A final note for you drivers out there, the roads in Yellowstone are being rebuilt section by section, so you'll experience some road closures when you are there. Just check with the visitor center or ranger station for road closure scheduled. Remember, when you tour the park, stop often, savor the sights and sounds, read about the geology, the habitat, the wildlife, and the environment, and enjoy the vestas that lay before you. The National Park Service puts out a great wealth of information to make your grand tour enjoyable and informative. Part of that information includes rules, regulations, and precautions to be taken in the park. park's wildlife should be considered just that, wildlife. Don't approach, harass, or feed the animals, even the small ones. Now these animals are fast. A bear, for example, can run up to 30 miles per hour, faster than the world record holder in a 100 yard dash. And bison are even faster. And those horns can do a lot of damage, so please be careful. If you vacation with a pet, keep it on a leash while in the park. Pets are not allowed on the park trails, in the backcountry, or on the boardwalks. The hot springs in the geyser area pose a significant danger to those who stray from the designated trails and boardwalks. These areas are fragile and unstable, as well as dangerous, and the waters are boiling hot. Boating and fishing in the park are by permit only. Check in with any ranger station for permits. Camping and fire building are permitted only in designated areas. If you plan a backcountry trip, obtain a backcountry permit and discuss your plans with a ranger. Follow these three basics about the backcountry treks. Hike with at least one other person. Always register at the trailhead before assaulting the trail and learn how to store your food in bear country. Here's North District Park Ranger Steve Fry. Proper storage means essentially keeping that food and garbage away from or out of the reach of bears. In the back country, that means hanging your food and your garbage a sufficient distance above the ground to preclude uh, its accessibility to bears. In front country, campgrounds that means storing your food and garbage inside your vehicle 
off-road traveling is not allowed in the park. The speed limit throughout the park is 45 miles per hour and lower in some posted areas. Use the pullouts to stop along the way for sightseeing and keep an eye out for bicyclists and hikers along the roadways. Yellowstone's fantastic geologic features are matched only by the rich diversity of wildlife throughout the park. Quite literally, Yellowstone is the country's largest single wildlife preserve. Remember, we are only visitors to the park. The wildlife is to be seen and appreciated from a distance. For you wildlife enthusiasts, one of the best times to visit the park is in the spring, when you can see the cute newborn animals. If you do plan to visit in the spring, before Memorial Day, call ahead for information on weather and road conditions, and bring your bug spray. Mosquitoes hatch in the spring, but they usually are gone by mid-June. The fall is an exceptional time to visit the park. This is the time of the rut or mating season. To hear the elk bugle is truly an experience. Though Yellowstone is noted for its diversity of wildlife, it seems to be most noted for its bears. During our tour of the park, we ran across famous wildlife cinematographer Gordon Eastman and an associate as they were filming a grizzly in action. He's over here. Okay, okay there's an elk right here beneath this tree. He's coming right up behind the elk. It's going to be interesting to see what that elk does. Stop her down. To put it between. What? You are between 16 and 11? I'm right on 16. There we go. Oh, he isn't running full bore. He's just trying to run that cow off. Yep. She's going to look back where her calf is. She'll stop and look back and try to look right at her calf. Well, I got her run off. Yep, there she is. He was looking for a calf, is what he was looking. Now watch, he'll go back and he's going to go back, and, isn't he, Ron? Yeah. And check out <laughs> for a calf. Yeah. He's looking he's for a me. calf to kill. He's going to inspect that whole ground. Isn't that amazing? This is the kind of sequence that you, when you're a wildlife photographer, you really get excited about. Check with park rangers to find out the best time and places to see the wildlife you're interested in during your visit. Here are a few general recommendations from the park service. As we said before, early morning and late evening are the best times to spot wildlife during the summer. For moose, Hayden Valley between Fishing Bridge and Canyon, and Pelican Creek east of Fishing Bridge. For bison, the Hayden Valley. For waterfowl, the Yellowstone River and the Hayden Valley. For elk, bison, pronghorn, and coyote, the Lamar Valley. For bighorn sheep, Mount Washburn. For elk and moose, Midway and Upper Geyser Basin. And the Lewis River area near the south entrance. For mule deer, the Old Faithful Lake and Canyon areas and the region between the north entrance and tower junction. And speaking of wildlife watching, we bumped into Gordon Eastman again. Yeah. This time they were filming bison, cautiously crossing a stream. The buffalo, there's, there's been more injuries and more fatalities by the bison. Yep. That one that smell the water, he's next. All bulls. It's a bull convention. You notice the other one waiting, just patiently like, we got a pecking order of where they belong in that line, and they probably do. You no, know, he's not allowed to go until the other one goes. <laughs> <laughs> Poor 
pretty hesitant there. He let his tail. The minute his tail goes straight up, they go. Now look at that one switching, see? I don't like this business. Switch my tail back and forth. Feel for the bottom. It isn't there. Does does nose right down in there. Yeah, trying to smell the bottom. <laughs> now the tail goes up and he goes. <laughs> thing that's kind of interesting. The bison weren't the only cautious ones. Gordon and the crew commented that when they found bison, they preferred to be on the opposite side of the river from them. The animals, they said, were unpredictable, dangerous, and fast, despite their docile look. Now here's an example of a tourist getting too close to be safe. Yellowstone offers its visitors plenty of recreational activities. Here's a rundown of what you got to choose from. Bus tours whisk you through the park, allowing you to sit back and enjoy the scenery. Hop on one of the many tour boats that ply the frigid waters of the Yellowstone Lake. Guides highlight the points of interest and help you spot wildlife along the shores. And for those who feel like stepping back in time, stagecoach rides originate from Roosevelt Lodge and take you through the park like it was done a century ago. For the slightly more adventurous, saddle up at one of the three stables located at Roosevelt Lodge, Mammoth Junction and Canyon Junction for a few hours of horseback riding. Yellowstone is cobwebbed with more than 1,000 miles of trails, providing rich outdoor experiences for all level of hikers. The more popular areas in the park have self-guided nature trails. Bicycling is permitted on public roads in the park, in parking lots and along designated routes. But bikes are prohibited on the backcountry trails and boardwalks. We strongly recommend wearing helmets and high visibility clothing since the roads are narrow, winding and have no shoulders. Boating is permitted on several lakes inside the park. However, you must obtain a permit for any type of boating. Power boats are allowed on parts of Yellowstone and Lewis Lake, and there are speed restrictions in some areas. All rivers and streams are closed to boating, with one exception, the portion of the Lewis River between Shoshone and Lewis Lake. Boats can be rented at Bridge Bay and Grant Village. Fishing in the park is like a dream, but fishing regulations within the park are stringent. Many areas are catch and release or fly fishing only, and live bait is strictly prohibited. You can rent both tackle and boats, plus guides and group fishing boats are available. As you can see, Yellowstone recreation isn't just limited to warmer months of the year. Winter recreation fans can find some of the best snowmobiling, cross-country skiing, and winter camping in the country in Yellowstone. The roads within the park are maintained during the winter, providing excellent access to this scenic winter wonderland all year round. And for the hardy, combine your skiing or snowmobiling with bracing winter camping, a sport growing in popularity in this region. Snow coach bus tours are available in the winter on a regular basis, either from West Yellowstone or Old Faithful inside the park. Meals and lodging are available at the Old Faithful Snow Lodge throughout the winter months. Other winter accommodations are available outside the park in West Yellowstone, Gardner and Cook City. There are plenty of recreational activities, lodging, restaurants, and scenery available to travelers on the way to and from the towns and areas surrounding the park. You'll need to contact the state and local tourism office for more detailed information, but here's a quick look at the nearby towns. Cody, Wyoming at the east entrance to the park is a slice of the Old West, an hour's drive through the beautiful Wapiti Valley. Cody has something for everyone. Including plenty of restaurants and motels, a nightly rodeo in the summer,
and the Buffalo Bill Historical Center with four museums in one building. The Buffalo Bill Historical Museum, the impressive Whitney Gallery of Western Art with its Remingtons, Russells, and more. The Plains Indians Museum, and the Winchester Firearms Museum. This is a great place to spend a rainy day, or even a few hours on a spectacular western sunny day. The Montana communities of Silvergate and Cook City sits just outside the park at the northeast entrance. The Cook City General Store is worth a visit, almost like stepping back in time. Red Lodge, Montana is about an hour away from this entrance. This scenic area offers every conceivable outdoor activity, hunting, fishing, camping, whitewater sports, dude ranching, and great sweet rolls. The community of Gardner, Montana, just outside the north entrance to the park, has a full range of recreational activities, lodging and restaurants available to the traveler. The rustic town of West Yellowstone guards the west entrance to the park. For the western adventure, West Yellowstone has lodging, restaurants, outfitters, guides, and other activities. The south entrance to the park is through the Grand Teton National Park. Remember, you can visit both parks for the price of one. Well, this about wraps up the first part of our video trip to Yellowstone National Park. Now we're going to share some information with you to help make your trip to Yellowstone easier and a lot more fun. Most people who visit Yellowstone drive there in the family car or recreational vehicle. Major park roads are usually open from early May through the end of October, but adverse weather conditions can delay the openings and step up the fall closing dates. If you plan spring or fall visits to the park, call first to make sure the roads are open. During the winter, roads are kept open for automobiles from the north entrance to Mammoth Hot Springs and to Cook City, Montana, near the northeast entrance. However, snowstorms can close these roads at any time. United Express and other commercial air service fly year-round to all cities in the Yellowstone area including Cody and Jackson, Wyoming, Idaho Falls, Idaho, Bozeman, and Billings, Montana. Air service is available to West Yellowstone, Montana from June to early September. Rental cars are available in all five cities served by year-round commercial air service. Bus service is available year-round to West Yellowstone and to Gardner, Montana. The level of service varies with the season. Commercial bus service is available to the park daily during the summer months from Cody and Jackson, Wyoming. There are also easy to follow road signs located at all junctions throughout the park. Inside the park, hotels, lodges, and cabins offer a variety of settings and price ranges that nearly all visitors can enjoy. There are a few general guidelines to follow to ensure a hassle-free vacation. Reservations are a must and should be made well in advance of your arrival through TW Recreational Services, which operates all the facilities within the park. Confirmation of accommodations will not be sent until a deposit for the first night for each hotel you plan to use has been made. This is handled directly through the Central Reservation Center and must be made within 14 days of when the reservations are placed. Cancellations and refunds can be made up to 48 hours prior to your scheduled arrival without losing your deposit. Here's a quick look at the lodging facilities in the park operated by TW Recreational Services. Mammoth Hot Springs Hotel and Cabins, located at the northwest boundary of the park. The Roosevelt, another outstanding rustic lodge, located at Tower Junction in the north area of the park. Canyon Lodge, near the Grand Canyon of Yellowstone, offers single-story units with private baths and showers. The Lake Yellowstone Hotel, the Grand Dom of the park, 
was originally completed in 1891. The hotel offers suites, high and medium price rooms, and nearby cabins with baths. The Lake Lodge and Cabins offers rustic cabins, cottages with showers. Grant Village, located on Lake Yellowstone's southwestern shore, offers private baths with showers in every room. The Old Faithful Inn, built in 1903 and 1904, is worthy of a visit, even if you don't plan to stay. The Old Faithful Lodge has a wonderful view of its namesake geyser. Guests stay in vintage cabins, with or without showers, at moderate prices. Old Faithful Snow Lodge and cabins are the only accommodations available during winter months. More than a dozen campgrounds are located inside the park. The campgrounds are open from mid-June to mid-September and sites are available on a first-come, first-served basis. Get to your campsites early. Campgrounds usually fill up by midday. All backcountry camping and fires require special permits available from park rangers. The Park Service is experimenting with the nationwide Picatron Campground Reservation System for several campsites in Yellowstone and other national parks. Reservations can be made up to eight weeks in advance through Ticketron. At least five of the park's campgrounds have dump stations for recreational vehicles. Madison, Bridge Bay, Fishing Bridge, Canyon Village, and Grant Village. LP gas is available in the park at Old Faithful, Grant Village, and Fishing Bridge. Since most park visitors travel by car, you'll no doubt wear warm weather clothing while in the car. But remember, the weather in the West can change fast and radically, from sizzling hot to blistery cold in a matter of a few hours. During any visit to the park, always bring cold weather clothing worn in layers or carried in a day pack, especially if you take a lengthy hike or go out on Lake Yellowstone. If you plan to hike, make sure you have comfortable, good shoes or boots to avoid blisters and sore feet. Medical care is available in three locations within the park at these locations. The Lake Clinic, Pharmacy and Hospital, the Old Faithful Clinic, and the Mammoth Clinic. Emergency help is available by dialing 911. Before setting off on a long or overnight hike, register with the closest ranger station to the trailhead. This will help them find you if you don't return on time. While the crystal clear and icy cold water found in the mountain streams in many national parks may seem inviting to drink, don't do it. You'll see animals drinking the water, but humans must take several precautions. Drinking untreated natural water can result in a severe intestinal disorder called giardiasis. It can also infect your dog or cat if you're traveling with house pets. Carried in both humans and animals, giardia contamination is common in surface water supplies like lakes, streams, and rivers. Here are three basic ways to protect yourself from giardiasis. The most effective protection is to carry your own water from a known safe drinking water supply. The next most effective method is to boil water obtained locally for at least a minute at low altitude and three to five minutes at high altitude. And the least effective method is to filter the water with a high quality filter that can remove particles as small as one micron. Moderate fee for automobiles and motorcycles entering Yellowstone and Grand Teton National Parks is good for seven days. Persons entering on foot, bicycle, or by bus are each charged the same fee for a seven-day entrance permit. For travelers who may be visiting one or more parks or other federal recreational facilities, there are five special passes available. The Golden Eagle Pass is an annual entrance pass to all national parks, monuments, historic sites, recreation areas, and wildlife refuges. The Golden Age Passport is a lifetime entrance pass to all of the same facilities for people who are 62 years of age or older. 
The Passport also provides a 50% discount on federal use fees inside the facilities. It does not cover fees charged by private concessionaires. The Golden Access Passport is a similar lifetime entrance pass for persons who are blind or permanently disabled. This passport also provides for the 50% discount on federal use fees, but does not cover fees charged by private concessionaires. The annual pass and lifetime passports can be purchased by mail or in person from most National Park Service, U.S. Forest Service, and U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service offices or facilities. Individual national parks, monuments, historic sites, and recreational areas sell an annual parks pass which permits unlimited entry at the specific National Park Service facility in which you are interested. Well, this about wraps up our look at Yellowstone National Park. Hope you enjoyed it as much as we did.